welcome to Take Your Territory with Jamie Rohrbach. This is the podcast where I encourage you to go out and take your dream, receive your destiny from the Lord Jesus, the destiny that He planned for you before the foundation of the world. This is the territory that God has ordained for your life. It's a big dream that you have, and it can happen. Every good thing is waiting for you, and today we're going to talk about making that visible in your life. Stay tuned for today's episode. Hello and welcome to Take Your Territory with Jamie Rohrbach. I'm so glad you're tuning in today. Hey, today I want to encourage you, my friend, in the area of money. I know this is such a huge issue, a huge area of life, and it really affects almost every other area of life. I mean, can you think about how much money impacts your emotional health, your physical health, your well-being, your level of peace and calm? Money is just huge. And I think that's why Jesus talked about it so much and really why the Bible says so much about money. Remember that Jesus taught us that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And of course, God wants our heart to be with him. And so he has us check where is our treasure and how are we handling our treasure. But that's not the point of my podcast today. What my big point of my podcast is today is that I want to encourage you today to pursue wisdom in money. Here's the thing. You can totally get to a point, if you're not already there, where money is just not a problem. In other words, where you rock at money, where you're amazing at it, where you know where every dollar is going, where you have so much money that it's coming out your proverbial ears, where you never have to worry about how you're going to pay the bills, where you have lots of money in savings. You can have $1,000, you can have $10,000, you can have $100,000. You can easily have a million dollars or $10 million in savings. You can get to that point. You can get to the point where, as Dave Ramsey says, who's one of my favorite financial coaches, he says, live like no one else so that later you can live like no one else. That's so profound because when you live now to make sacrifices with your money, you can get to the point where later you just have so much and you can give. So many people just want to give, and we have good hearts in that. We should want to give. But the fact is, if we're not wise stewards of our money, your heart could be burning to give, and yet beyond the tithe that the Lord tells us that we need to return to Him, and beyond any offerings that He speaks to us by faith to give, you might not have the money to give in all the other ways that God wants to help you give because you want to, because it's the desire of your heart. God wants you to be able to do all of these things. Everything you want to do with money, whether it's something enjoyable like going on a vacation or whether it's something like giving to someone in need, whether it's giving into the gospel work, whether it's being able to retire and travel the world with your spouse and your family, whether it's being able to look at your bank accounts and know that you have plenty, no matter what it is that you want to do with money, if it's a good thing, a godly thing, God wants you to be there, and you can get there. This is how. Stop listening to the spirit of poverty. Okay, now people immediately, when I talk about the spirit of poverty, or really when any preacher talks about the spirit of poverty, people often think, okay, if I can just get the spirit of poverty off me by casting it out, then I can start being wealthy and money will start coming to me. Look, I don't believe the spirit of poverty is something that you just cast out, although of course you do cast it out, tell it to leave. But I believe the spirit of poverty is something that lies to you, a demonic force, a demon that lies to you in the area of money and stewardship. And this is just a demon that you can tell to leave in Jesus' name. But the thing is that if you've listened to its lies, then you have a stronghold in your head and your thinking. A house of wrong thoughts, as Joyce Meyer teaches, and the way I teach it, it's like a pole barn where you've wrapped the whole pole barn in pink saran wrap, and you're standing inside it, and you look out at the world, and it can be a beautiful sunny day, but instead of looking at the clear blue sky, you're looking at a pink sky. Instead of looking at trees that are green or brown, you're looking at everything pink because you're standing inside this pole barn looking out through the world through a pink saran wrap covering. So that's what I believe a stronghold is. And when you have been listening to a spirit of poverty for a long time, the spirit of poverty lies to you and tells you lies about money and about stewardship that are intended to keep you poor. In other words, that are intended to keep you away from the truth of God's word about money. And I believe every person can and should be fabulously wealthy. 
If you're a Christian, if you name the name of Jesus, you should be so wealthy. You should be so prosperous because that is what the word of God says, that you'll be blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed going out, that you'll lend to many nations and never borrow. And that is what Jesus died for. The Bible tells us that Jesus became poor so that you might become rich and that everything that was a work of the devil, which poverty is certainly a work of the devil, everything that is a work of the devil, Jesus came to destroy those things. So we don't want the blood of Jesus to be wasted in our lives in any area. We need to walk in the full freedom, the full wealth, the full abundance, the full happiness and victory and holiness, most of all, that comes with or that is ours with the blood of Jesus. But you know what? Wealth is part of holiness. The Bible teaches us to make a profit, to do business well. And I have a whole other class about that, and I'm not going to get into that right this second because it would take me way too long. I couldn't possibly finish it in one podcast. But I want to encourage you to destroy the works of the poverty spirit in your life by learning the wisdom of God about money. My friend, have our written prayers on the blog at fromhispresence.com and overnotunder.com been a blessing to you? Hey, I hear all the time that the prayers that we write out help people because they're not sure how to pray or they're not sure where to get the most powerful vocabulary for prayer. And as with anything, the most powerful everything comes from the Word of God. That means the most powerful words for worship come from the Word of God. The most powerful words for prayer come from the Word of God. The most powerful words for intercession and prophetic declaration all come from the Word of God. So in order to help people know how to pull the Word of God into their prayers in the most powerful way, I always ask the Lord to show me and dictate to me prophetic prayers, spiritual warfare prayers, prophetic declaration prayers. And we have so many of those on the blog. But in response to your request from so many readers, we wrote a book and had it printed of these prayers. Now, we have a whole lot more prayers on the blog, so that means more books to be written. But right now, the first book is out, Radical Prayer, Radical God, 25 Prayers That Bring Heaven to Earth. These prayers do bring heaven to earth. This book includes a prayer to raise the spiritually dead, a prayer to find a husband or wife if you're single, a prayer to believe and remind God that promotion comes from Him alone and to pray that promotion in. 10 prayers that draw me closer to God than any other prayers. Those are my personal go-tos. Five prayers to increase God's glory on your prayer life. These are the prayers that God has used to help me learn how to pray. Prayer for your children that God himself would disciple your children. Our powerful prayer to reverse unjust situations. A prayer for justice that is our most popular post on the blog at fromhispresence.com. My friend, if you would like a printed copy of this book, We can send you one in the continental United States, or you can order one yourself if you are outside of the USA. And all you have to do is simply click on the store link on our blog from hispresence.com and you can order your copy. And if you live outside the USA, you can click on the link at the footer of our page where it says Jamie's Printed Books, and that will take you directly to my store on Lulu, which is our printer, and they have international facilities so they can mail you a book in most cases. Hey, check us out on the store. Get this book. It will bless you. If you are not yet praying as powerfully as you want to pray, this book will kickstart you and help you learn the vocabulary straight from the word for powerful prayer and declaration. Grab it today. You'll be glad you did. Hey friend, do you need resurrection in your life? If so, I want to tell you about a new ebook that I just released. It's called Live Again. 21 prophetic words that make dry bones rattle. And this title comes out of the book of Ezekiel, you know, the vision where the Lord spoke to the prophet Ezekiel and had him speak to the bones and the bones came to life. And if you feel like you have been just dead inside, dry inside, no hope inside, then I want you to know that right now God is moving in your heart, he's moving in your spirit to bring you back to life. And so I made this ebook of these 21 prophetic words that I felt were for right now. Even as I was editing it and putting it together with the help of my team, I was just struck by the words over and over again as God was saying, this is for you. This is for the promises I've made you. This is the covenant I've made with you. This is the new beginnings you've longed for. 
over and over these words just affirmed that and it's straight from the word of God. These are prophetic words that I've scribed listening to the Lord, just taking dictation basically from the Lord, hearing what he had to say and writing it down for you. So I hope you'll get this ebook. It's called Live Again, 21 Prophetic Words That Make Dry Bones Rattle. A smattering of the words include titles such as Do Not Limit the Holy One of Israel, Don't Doubt Your New Beginnings, I Am Restoring Your Happy Tears, Says the Lord, Fly High with Favor You Don't Need. One of my favorites is A Lessening of Common Grace is Kicking You Out of the Nest. Another one, Declare and Decree Multiplication and Increase into Your Life. A Prayer to Cross Over into the Promised Land. And another one of my favorites, a prayer, a powerful spiritual warfare prayer for punitive damages in the spirit. This is an ebook you can get on my Gumroad store. It's instantly downloadable. It is a PDF file, 83 pages in length and easily formatted for you to read on your mobile device. Check it out on my store at gumroad.com forward slash from his presence. And I believe it'll bless you. Look, everybody's good about something. Everybody is really good at at least one thing, right? What is your thing that you're really great at? Is it cooking? Is it knowing about sports and understanding how different games work, how football, soccer, baseball, whatever? Is it understanding sports and knowing sports teams? Is it mechanics where you can fix a car or a tractor or a lawnmower? Is it something you do with your hands that's more of an indoor type of thing like sewing or knitting or scrapbooking? Maybe you're a really good public speaker, or maybe you're really, really good at managing people at your job. Maybe you're a nurse or a doctor and you're great at those things, nursing and medicine. I don't know. Maybe you're even great with animals. You know, some people don't like animals at all, but there are some people that animals just love you and you love animals and you can heal animals and comfort them. And you just really enjoy taking care of that part of the creation of the Lord, which is honoring to Him. I don't know what the thing is that you're great at, but if you think about that thing right now, I want you to imagine what would your life be if you were just as good at money as you are at that thing. If you're a great cook, but you're not very good at money right now, how would your life change if you were just as good at money as you are at cooking? If you are wonderful at understanding sports and sports teams and sports statistics and things like that, how would your life be if you were just as good at money as you are at sports? Can you imagine, and I could go on and on with examples, but can you imagine what it would be like to always know that you are flush with money and you never have to worry, you have no debt, your house is paid for, your cars are paid for, your college education for your children is paid for, you're just in complete abundance at all times? Look, my friends, you can get there. And that is what I want to encourage you about today. Because Christians, I think, have a big weakness in many situations, particularly in the Western church. And that weakness is we tend to expect God to do things for us without getting up and obeying him and doing things ourselves. And the fact of the matter is that anytime we want to operate in God's abundance, there's always an if. We have to learn his principles in whatever area. And then we have to execute his principles, carry out his principles, obey his principles. And if you will just learn how money works, If you'll learn about budgeting and become an amazing budgeter, if you'll learn about how you can make more money in your job and become an amazing employee who gets raises left and right, if you'll learn about how to build a business, learn about entrepreneurship, and then go after it, start now and don't ever quit and build that business of your dreams. Build it until it's a multi-million dollar or multi-billion dollar business. Can you imagine what your life would be like? You can do that. You can do it. Can you imagine if you started now and you learned about investing and mutual funds and retirement savings? And if in a few years you looked at your savings accounts and you had hundreds of thousands of dollars in your savings accounts, or maybe even millions or billions, just depending on where you're starting and how big your shovel is of your income. It doesn't matter if your income is tiny. You can start where you are and you can get better. You can make more money. You can learn how to manage it better. And this is what I think the Western church needs. We need the wisdom of God in our finances, and then we need to actually obey the wisdom of God. The poverty spirit wants to lie to you, my friend. The poverty spirit wants to tell you lies, and it will tell you lies if you'll listen. Lies about how to handle money, lies about what you should and should not do, 
telling you to spend when you shouldn't spend, telling you to make investments that have no wisdom at all. I'm so, so saddened by the number of letters I get about Christians making investments that are terrible investments. They're not wise. They get duped and they didn't do their research and they tried to do something to get rich quick and they lost all their money. Don't do that, my friend. Please, I beg of you, in the name of Jesus, apply the wisdom of God to your finances. Apply yourself to learning and studying and being excellent in your finances and being an excellent steward. Because if you'll do that day after day after day and manage what God has given you to his glory, obeying all of his financial principles, then you can get to a place where you are just so incredibly blessed that you're the person employing the people and paying them well, that you're the person running the company, you're the person owning the company, you're the person with all the money, you're the person giving into the gospel work. You can be that person, that wealthy person. You can do this no matter where you're starting. You can do this no matter what things look like right now. You can do this. You can win at money. You can manifest the glory of God, the weight, the splendor, and the abundance of God in your finances. That's what glory means, by the way. Weight, splendor, and copiousness or abundance. That's what God's glory is. You can manifest that in your finances. Stop listening to the spirit of poverty if you are. Please, I beg you in the name of Jesus, kick that thing to the curb. Learn what the word of God says about money and then do only what he says. There are some great, great resources. If you want to learn about money God's way, Find books and read them. Find blogs and read them. Some of my favorite ones are Crown Financial Ministries, Larry Burkett, Howard Dayton, Dave Ramsey, who is with Ramsey Solutions in Nashville, Tennessee. He's one of my favorite money gurus. And there are lots of others. If you'll just start there, that's a great place to start. But please also read the Bible and what it talks about money. Read what it says in the Proverbs. The Proverbs are so full of money advice. Read what Jesus says about money and about your treasure and about how to manage it. Study what the Bible says about your treasure and about your money because it's all God's money. Everything belongs to him and you're only stewarding it for a temporary time. And when we get to heaven, don't you want to hear the Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant? I know I do. So let's go after this thing together. Let's not be Christians who just presumptuously depend on God to do everything for us without our bothering to obey him. Let's go after him and believe him that as we obey him, that he'll come up under us and he will do everything for us that he's promised because we meet his conditions of obedience. Okay, I hope that encourages you today, but I hope that challenges you most of all. And I hope that it lights a fire in your heart today to go out and win at money, win at stewardship, become awesome at it educate yourself, pray, ask the Lord to help you, commit yourself to him today to be a good steward, and the Lord will bless you. Let me pray for you real quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask right now that, Holy Spirit, you would convict my friend who's listening, that you would inspire them, that you'd help them, that you would teach them, and in the name of Jesus, I pray that they would renounce the poverty spirit right now, that they would command it to leave in Jesus' name, and that they would say, Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit and teach me your ways. Teach me your truth and help me to walk in them. Lord, we believe you. Let us obey you. Lord, help us. Help us. Teach our hands to war and our fingers to fight. Let every person listening to this podcast win at money. I thank you, Lord. Bless them. Let them walk in the abundance that you sent Jesus to die for and the victory that Jesus won for us with his blood on the cross. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My friend, before we go, let me tell you about some resources I have for you. On the blog, I have a free blog post about seven signs of the spirit of poverty. If you have not read that post, please grab that post. You can Google it up or you can find it in the show notes. And diagnose yourself. Use it as a tool to diagnose yourself to see, are you being influenced by that spirit of poverty that lies to you about money and doesn't want you to obey God? If you've been influenced by that spirit, that blog post about seven signs of the spirit of poverty will help you get rid of that thing and kick it to the curb. And then I also want to encourage you to get my webinar teaching. It's a recorded webinar on my Gumroad store about how to get rid of the spirit of poverty 
And it talks about the broader impact the spirit of poverty can have, especially on your church community and leadership, and even on the opportunity that is presented to you. The level of opportunities in your life can actually be hindered by a spirit of poverty. If you haven't gotten that recorded webinar, please grab it. It's so important. It's not expensive. It's only a few dollars. On my Gumroad store, you can watch it and download it instantly, and that'll be a blessing to your life. Thank you so much, my friend, for tuning in. Please leave us a review on this podcast. Check us out on the blog at fromhispresence.com and also on my financial blog, overnotunder.com, where I write about money and motivation. I don't update that nearly as often, except when I have something to say specifically, but please check those out. They will encourage you. Have an awesome day, my friend. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.